Hey readers, I'm Abby. And I'm Jess. And we read mm -hmm. Next Year in Havana by Chanel Cleeton this month for our book club. Yes, and it was so good. We love this book. Um, so Abby, do you want to just sum it up for everybody? Sure. So this book is a dual narrative. Part of it takes place in 1958 and 1959 in Cuba mm -hmm. when Batista flees the country and Fidel Castro is taking over. It's the Cuban Revolution. Everything is in upheaval. And Elisa Perez is one of four daughters of a big sugar baron. The Perez family is very well off. Sugar was the number one, the number one export. Yeah. And so they have money at a time when their fortunes are changing. Um, so they led this beautiful, opulent life, and all of a sudden, that puts taken. them at risk. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So now we flash forward to modern day and we meet Marisol Ferreira, who is a journalist. And she grew up in Miami with her beloved grandmother, Elisa. And sadly, her grandmother has just passed away and she is charged with going back to Cuba with her grandmother's ashes to sprinkle them in her grandmother's homeland. And while she's there, she meets some of her grandmother's friends. She yeah. begins to uncover some family secrets. And she meets a super hot guy <laughs> named Luis. And this book is absolutely absorbing and really, really educational. I learned a lot about Cuban history and sort of what caused so many Cubans to actually move to America and to Florida. Yeah, um, it was I, fascinating. Yeah, I learned so much. I feel like this book, although it's fiction, really gives you a view into the history of Cuba and everything that happened there. And I actually found out some like interesting stuff about my own family. Um, my uncle, weirdly, sorry if this is a little off topic. <laughs> my uncle um, grew up in Havana and actually um, was part of a wealthy family there and had to flee when Castro came to power. Um, he left with nothing and some of his family was persecuted in Cuba and he went to Miami, um, Florida, uh, to seek a better life in America. So. It was really weird reading this and then also learning that about my uncle. So it was super enlightening in many, many ways. Wow, this book must have been so touching and yeah. educational and yeah. must have felt really personal It really did. To you. Yeah. Um, so if you read along with us this month, leave us a comment on this video, tell us your thoughts, um, and we're going to dive into some of the meat of the discussion of the book. Yes, so. Okay. Kick us off. All right, going into it. So as we uh, said before, there are two um, points of view in this book. We have Elisa, who is Marisol's grandmother. Um, we hear from her as she is a 19-year-old in Cuba. And then we also hear from Marisol. Um, she's in her 30s, and she's in Cuba for the first time. Um, who did you? relate to more? Who did you find more interesting? Did you have a favorite? Well, I have to say that Elisa's story really captivated me. I mean, to be at the precipice of revolution, to see sort of your world changing right in front of you, I have no idea what that's like. And so I was sort of hanging on every word of that story. Um, and Elisa sort of falls in love with this revolutionary. And so it's really like her heart is on one side of the story, but her father yeah. represents the other side. And her duty, right? Like her duty to her exactly. family, which was like a huge deal in the book for her. Her name meant the world to her totally. and shaped her whole life. So I was, I was really, loving those parts of the story. But then I really relate to Marisol, who's, you know, she's in her 30s, she's single, she's a writer, I'm all of those things <laughs> as well. Um, and she has this sort of quest to learn more about her family, 
um, and where she came from. And my grandmother just passed away and I was super close with her as well. So yeah. that touched me, that sort of yeah. embarking on a trip to sort of live out her grandmother's legacy. Yeah. Um, so I really resonated with that as well. Um, and I love to travel and um, so, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, could, I could go to Cuba and pitch a story <laughs> about it like uh, Marisol For read does. it forward. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Books to read when you go to Cuba. Totally. Um, so, yeah. What about you? I also, I loved Elisa's story. I think it was really, the way that she told her story was very intriguing and hearing about Cuba before the revolution mm -hmm. was very interesting because when you hear about it from Marisol, it's all like post and kind of, you know, it takes place like many, many years later. Um, and I loved hearing about like the dresses and the jewelry and, and the parties and just what her life was before. But also how I, I loved how she was so strong and strong willed and fueled by her passion and when she falls in love that also like guides her um and she but she uh, yeah at the same time she always has like a good head on her shoulders yeah she's always thinking you know what impact will this decision have on the rest of my family um so i really really did enjoy that part of the book mm -hmm. but i personally related a lot to marisol because um both of my parents are immigrants to the U.S. And um, growing up as a child of two immigrants, you hear a lot about where they're from. Um, so, you know, from the time I, I can remember, they, I've heard, I heard stories about them growing up um, in this, on this tiny island called Malta. If you don't know where that is, look it up. Um, <laughs> it's really cute. Um, I heard all about this place that was so beautiful and, and just so um, far away. And I didn't go there um, until I was 14. So I grew up hearing these stories and not really knowing much except for what I can picture and the photographs that I've seen and what, what they've told me. And so Marisol had that same experience with Cuba. She had heard about it from her grandmother and you know heard all these magical stories about what it was like when she was growing up there and felt a deep connection to a place that she's actually never been to. Um, and I think that anybody that, you know, their parents weren't born here, um, They'll, they'll understand that, that kind of connection to a place that you don't even know. Mm. Yeah. I love how personal this novel was for you. It was really personal and very emotional um, because she spoke uh, Chanel Clayton, like clearly um, you could tell she understood and she put parts of herself into this book and, and the way that she wrote about um, home mm -hmm. uh, it was so real. Um, and this kind of fractured identity, like you kind of feel part American and, and part not. And it's a weird, it's a weird feeling that not many people understand. I'll, I'll never forget like growing up and people telling me, oh yeah, my, you know, we live in my, the house that my parents grew up in and you know, where my grandma lived down the street and, and my parents grew up on, you know, across the ocean mm -hmm. so it, it it's a very it was a very personal read for me mm -hmm. um, and I definitely I think Marisol's feelings uh, perfectly reflect mine well and it's so cool Chanel Clayton actually wrote this beautiful letter that she included in the book club kit for next year in Havana which is actually on read it forward so um, we'll out. post it here, but also go check it out. It's a really beautiful story that, you know, sort of details her own personal connection and her family. And, um, you know, just like you just did, it's, it's such a personal connection to this narrative. And, right, you can see that it, it sort of bleeds through on the page. Yeah. And it really, like, you know, 
I, I enjoy when other people read books like this as well because it kind of opens their eyes to the feelings that I've been feeling and probably so many other people like me have felt in the past where identity is such a weird thing for us mm -hmm. and, and home is such a weird thing. And it, I love when other people read books like this because it kind of gives them a sense of what that's like. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. So you were talking about um, Elisa's sense of duty to her family. There is such a sense of she's a Perez first and a Cuban yeah. second. Um, and she loves her family, but she also loves her country. And so it's really hard for her to divide that and split that um, in a way where she feels like she's doing the right thing. She has the right loyalty. Where does her loyalty lie? Is it with her yeah. country or with her family? I think throughout the book, she kind of flip flops um, between family and country. Mm -hmm. And that really comes out when she meets Pablo. Um, I think that originally it was always family first. I think she was very, she's very protective of her family and mm -hmm. wants to ensure that their safety is number one. But when Pablo comes into the picture, he's a revolutionary. And I mean, that's a big part of the story. That's what makes their relationship so difficult and, and um, a secret from everybody. And once he comes into her life, he shows her his way of thinking and really exposes her to like a whole different love for Cuba. Um, and that does change her forever and I think it changes the way that she sees the country that she's always knew mm -hmm. but um, knew and loved but in a, in a different way um, so yeah and I think that when she becomes pregnant family again becomes her first priority mm -hmm. um, everything becomes about the baby yeah yeah well let's talk about these guys for a sec because yeah. Woo! Talk about <laughs> falling in love super fast. They fall in love so fast. I mean, to tell you, uh, yeah. Elisa meets Pablo at a party. Yeah. The next day she's like, I think I'm in love with this guy. <laughs> um, and they do write each other letters back and forth. Yeah, at least they do. They have like a, a, a few... courtship yeah, through a courtship. letters. Yeah, because he's off fighting and she is still like you know, just trying to live life in Havana. Mm -hmm. And they do have like this romantic thing that brews over time. So I will give that You'll to You'll allow her. that, okay. <laughs> but now we've got Marisol yeah. who comes to Havana and she meets Luis, who's the grandson of Anna, who was her grandmother's best friend and who stayed in Cuba when her grandmother's family fled. And so these two friends were ripped apart. So Luis is her grandson. Yeah. And these two fall in love in like a matter days. of days. Days. Yeah. I mean, it'll take me days to just call someone back. <laughs> Never mind fall in completely in love and actually, you know, consider moving for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Did you think that was realistic? Uh, I think it happening that fast never happens, but I do think that that's something that is common in books and in movies. You see these two people that are strangers meet, and all of a sudden it's like, you know, love oh. at first sight. And I don't know if I believe in that, so, um, so I don't know. But I guess there were some connections there that, like, brought them together quick like more quickly than it would other people totally I think so, um, right the conditions are heightened yeah and it's not only historical fiction but there's also a romance element to this book and so yeah. I guess if we didn't have any romance it wouldn't be considered a romance book. <laughs> so yeah I'll look the other way yeah. on this one but um, yeah Marisol and Louise she actually like her grandmother ends up kind of falling for a revolutionary of yeah. sorts. Luis is not only the grandson of Anna, but he also teaches at the University of Havana, but he's sort of a secret subversive blogger, yeah. and he writes about the regime uh, in a way that gets him noticed, and not in a good way. Not in not, a good way. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so 
it's funny that like grandmother, like granddaughter, these two are attractive to these men that are sort of railing against Cuba in some way, shape, or form. Yes, and I think that says something about both of them, that they like are both fueled by passion, but at the same time scared of it. Mm -hmm. um, they're always in love with these revolutionaries, but are a little bit afraid of becoming ones themselves. Yes. I think. Um, yes, so yeah. Elisa actually buries the letters from yeah. Pablo in the backyard, and he'd given her a ring. I mean, an engagement, a few days, jeez. Anyway, <laughs> I guess it's a few months. But it, it was a few months in their case, but still. Still. So she sad. buries this ring um, in the backyard. And when Marisol travels to Cuba, Anna gives her this box of her grandmother's possessions and sort of says, like, go read. Um, and she finds out, like, this whole new chapter about her grandmother. She never knew that her grandmother had fallen in love in Cuba. Uh, the only thing that Marisol knew was that her grandmother met her grandfather in Florida and that was the love of her life. So when she found out that there was another man that she never knew about, she was very hurt because she felt very close to her grandmother and felt like this was one huge part of her life that she decided to keep a secret. I mean, it's like when you find out that your parents were actually like your age once it's the same with your grandparents like it's so it's she was a 19 year old girl yeah. falling in love and yeah um so without like saying too much you know do you think marisol's grandfather knew the deal i about the baby yeah i do too yes i think he yeah. knew yeah. yeah. Um, they sort of gloss over it at the end, like, oh, the baby came early. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't, like, premature at all. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think... I think just, yeah, like, you take the facts and just add them up <laughs> and, yeah. But I think he probably loved Elisa and was just willing to, like, start a family with her and... Yeah, I think he was a good man, I'm sure, and he... He was also from Cuba, mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure there was some connection there, and I'm sure they loved each other, but I think what maybe what she was trying to show is that some love happens instantly, mm -hmm. and it's fueled by, like I said before, like passion, and it's just like a fire, but then other loves grow with time, yeah. and I think that's maybe what she was trying to show by those two relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And equally, they're they're both equally adorable. And <laughs> I'm waiting for my fire. Honestly, bring it on. Um, whew, I gotta. You gotta go somewhere. I, I gotta you gotta go. To go. Cuba, I think. I don't know. There's something in the water uh, along the Malecon. Is that what it's called? I don't. I don't know how you correctly say that. Someone tell us. Yes, please. <laughs> um, but it did make me really want to visit Havana. It really made me want to as well. Definitely a little scary. Obviously, the conditions are still um, not the best, but uh, it sounds beautiful and I can picture it. Uh, yeah. I think that it, she, the author did a great job of making everything come to life in my head. Um, I was picturing the crystal clear blue water and yeah. just like the colorful buildings. Like and the old world oh. nature, the cars. Yes. It yeah. definitely was very visible in my mind. I was Googling um, lots of pictures of like old cars. Same. And, yeah. Same. I needed to like see what exactly totally. everything looked like. Um, how did you feel about um, Elisa's sisters? Oh, I want to get to know them more, actually. Um, Maria is the youngest one. Yeah. I'd love to know. She was only 13 when they left. I'd love to know what was going through her mind. Um, and her sister Beatrice sounds so, sounds so fiery cool. <laughs> and she, like a so total cool. spitfire. Yeah. She's wild. She's like the most gorgeous, but she's also like the most dominant and assertive and totally. not she's scared like, of anything. Walked right into that prison yeah. when their father was jailed. Yeah. Like she's got balls. Yeah, she really does. Um, 
And but you just told me something so cool, right? Yeah. So Chanel Clayton's next book, When We Left Cuba, um, is actually told from Beatrice's point of view. So you will get to know her better in yes. that book. I'm really excited to read it. Um, I Beatrice was one character I was like, for sure, I need to know more about her, about this woman. Yeah. At one point in the book, she was like, I was just going to assassinate Castro. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, <laughs> as an aside. Yeah, just okay. a little side note. I believe you. Yeah, <laughs> she was a really like badass woman. And she had secrets of her own. Yes, and uh, there's a lot of mystery surrounding her, and we kind of, they, like, they allude to it in the book, yeah. but we don't learn much about it. Um, so I really want to know what was going on there. Totally. Um, and Beatrice had a twin brother. Yes, Alejandro. Alejandro. Um, Alejandro was a revolutionary, and he was outcasted by his family because of, of that. Um, but he was Beatrice's twin brother. And you know that this is like a pain point for the entire family throughout the novel. Marisol knows it too, so it's clearly been something that has always, it, it continued on long after mm -hmm. everything that happened. And yeah, I yeah. mean, we unfortunately find out, you know, ho hopefully all of you read this, but we find out at, at the, towards the end that he, he did die in, in battle, which yeah. was really, That's sad. really sad. He was killed by the regime to make an example for the family and sort yeah. of placed on their doorstep in like the most grotesque brutal and grim way. way. Um, so Beatrice, I'm sure, has some like fire in her after that. And yeah. Are you going to read that next? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And our next book club. <laughs> <laughs> your personal book club continues and all of yours could too. Um, yeah. Yeah. When We Left Cuba, Chanel Clayton sort of follow up to this book. Um, yeah. So thank you all so much for reading along with us this May. Write your comments under this video on our Facebook group page. Um, we love hearing from you. Who did you resonate with more? Yeah, we want to know. And we really do love hearing from you. We check all the comments all the time and find them super interesting. So definitely let us know what you thought. And we'll see you next month.